Good day everybody, my name is Blitzvogel, and welcome to this discussion of AMD's new graphics processors due for initial release this summer under the codenames of Polaris 10, Polaris 11, and Vega. Now if you're like me, you're excited about the prospects of AMD returning to form, releasing competitive products that give NVIDIA a run for their money in terms of raw processing power, value, and power efficiency. Please don't get me wrong, I do not hate NVIDIA, but I really much appreciate a competitive landscape as it helps to keep innovation high and prices low. I will admit to hating Gameworks as it really has just hurt the PC gaming industry by fragmenting developers and creating an inconsistent performance environment even amongst NVIDIA's own graphics products. Just ask anyone with a pre-Maxwell NVIDIA GPU. So what are Polaris and Vega? Well, they are two names attributed to at least three of AMD's new generation of graphics processing units with two versions of Polaris called Polaris 11 and Polaris 10. The rumor is that there are also two versions of Vega, but it is not confirmed. They are all using AMD's 4th generation Graphics Core Next architecture and produced using a brand new 14 nanometer FinFET manufacturing process. AMD is claiming the advancements in architecture and process will enable up to a 2.5 times increase in performance per watt, a performance metric that AMD currently lags well behind in compared to Nvidia. There already is some light at the end of the tunnel for AMD if we take recent DX12 metrics seriously. Couple that to the sheer asynchronous compute capabilities of AMD's GCN architectures, and it's possible Nvidia will be in for a very rude awakening once DX12 and Vulkan hit the mainstream. Personally, I hope that this generation is a true and complete clean sheet generation, with absolutely no revised GPUs from the last few generations of AMD graphics processors. The 5000 series from 2009 was the last time AMD gave us a complete roster of new graphics processors. Sort of like some AMD and ATI practices of the past, I'm expecting this generation to be somewhat less focused about absolute performance increases for each market segment, and more about improving efficiency and performance at the compute unit level. Performance increases should be the result of that focus on efficiency and making the most of those latent G-flops AMD's graphics processors are capable of computing. The awesome performance increased potential thanks to asynchronous compute is one very good example of this. Starting with Polaris 11, it should be AMD's low-end GPU for 1080p gaming, a market successfully dominated by NVIDIA GTX 950s. Polaris 11 is rumored to feature at least 1,024 stream processors with a 128-bit memory bus which does sound an awful lot like an NVIDIA GTX 960 and will very likely meet if not exceed the GTX 960 in high clocked variants. Or at least, I hope so. Fourth gen GCN should have massive bandwidth efficiency improvements over previous versions of GCN like NVIDIA Maxwell did over Kepler. As a preview of Polaris's efficiency in terms of power per watts, AMD at CES this year pitted a GTX 950 gaming system versus one with Polaris to show the sheer differences and power consumption from the outlet while maintaining performance parity. However, AMD never confirmed which version of Polaris was used in this test, but in all likelihood it was indeed Polaris 11. Personally, I think the 1024 stream processor number sounds like a cut down version, and I'm expecting a full version to feature at least 1280 stream processors, or even more. I also very much expect 4th gen GCN to scale to very high GPU clocks in the 1300 to 1500 MHz range without a too high increase in power and heat. Polaris 10 will be the middle to sorta of high-end GPU for gaming at 1080p and beyond like 1440p resolution with a 256-bit memory bus utilizing GDDR5 memory and very likely GDDR5X as well. The Polaris 10 market is currently dominated by variants of the exceedingly successful GTX 970 and very high-end versions of the GTX 960, two GPUs that stormed in to sweep up a very large share of the graphics card market. Stream processor counts for Polaris 10 could be as high as over 3000, but my gut feeling is probably something similar to AMD's Hawaii, with the top end at 2816 stream processors. Cut down versions of this GPU could be as low if not lower than 2000 stream processors to fill in the gap between it and Polaris 11. Depending on 4th gen GCN's improvements, Polaris 10 could very possibly take on the GTX 980 while using vastly less power. Although this is a best case scenario, but it's certainly a possibility. Many of us were hoping Polaris 10 would use high bandwidth memory, but it will not because of its expense, so it will be limited to GDDR5X at the top end, and expect 8GB of video memory as standard. Finally we have Vega, which is slated to have 4096 stream processors, just like AMD's top-end VG GPU used in the Fury line of graphics cards that currently competes directly against NVIDIA's GTX 980 and 980 Ti products. 
VG was a debut of high bandwidth memory, while Vega will use second generation HBM2. HBM2 memory densities allow for at least 8GB of memory, while VG is currently limited to 4. Cut down versions will serve to close the market between it and Polaris 10, bringing high bandwidth memory and good enough 4K performance closer to the mainstream gaming market. Vega, like Fiji, will be marketed heavily for 4K in virtual reality, as the latter is very dependent on high and smooth frame rates with extremely consistent frame pacing. So once again, these are not confirmed facts and should be taken with a grain of salt. However, they are sensible predictions backed up by rumors and some credible sources combined with information directly taken from AMD. AMD also has to continue its intense focus on delivering excellent drivers and maintaining productive relationships with software developers to deliver great performance regardless of the graphics product. I hope this discussion got your minds firing on all cylinders. Let me know in the comments down below how you feel about Polaris and Vega and whether or not you'll be purchasing a new 4th gen GCN graphics card. Make sure to like this video if you did, subscribe for more tech previews and discussion from yours truly. Thank you so much everybody and take care.